Okay, so if you guys have seen this video where I lay out my entire hair care regimen structure, you'll already know that I use different deep conditioners on different wash days for my high porosity hair. Now here's my opinion. Having a whole bunch of different deep conditioners is not a problem at all, so long as each and every single one of these deep conditioners are there for a reason. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys exactly what you need to be looking for in deep conditioners for high porosity hair. And of course, as you guys know, I have high porosity hair, so I'm also going to be sharing with you guys some of my personal favorite deep conditioners that I use on all of my wash days, so don't play yourself. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video. <laughs> okay, so when looking for products, the first thing that you want to do is to identify the needs Needs of your hair and then select products based on the needs of your hair. So when it comes to high porosity hair, our three main needs are moisture, strength and conditioning. So we're going to start with moisture. Now, as you guys know, half of what makes healthy hair is its moisture levels. Now, here are some of the ingredients that you want to be looking out for in your deep conditioners to know that it's going to be moisturizing for high porosity hair. Now, the first ingredient is water, cause let's be honest, <laughs> don't nobody want thirsty hair, okay? As far as moisturizers go, water is literally nature's only inherent moisturizer. Other ingredients can be considered moisturizers in as much as they help your hair to retain water, but they aren't in and of themselves moisturizers. Okay, let's put it this way. I don't know about you guys, but the first thing that I do when I'm thirsty is to grab a tall glass of oil. No, exactly. When you're thirsty, you drink water. So if water is not the first ingredient in that deep conditioner, then we'll pass. The next group of ingredients that you want to be looking out for in your deep conditioners are humectants. So that will be your glycerins, your sorbitols, your honey, as well as, yes, you guessed it, your film forming humectants. If you don't know what film forming humectants are, then you need to right click on this video and cue it to watch after this one. And if you're tired of me talking about film forming humectants, then I don't make the rules, okay? It's above me. So your film forming humectants will be things like aloe vera, hydroxyethyl cellulose, marshmallow root, slippery elm and panthenol amongst others again if you're looking for a more extensive list you need to click that video the purpose of these humectants is not just to draw moisture to your hair but to keep moisture within your hair to slow that rate of moisture loss which we all know is a problem for high porosity hair and finally, the last group of ingredients you want to be looking for in your deep conditioners for high porosity hair to know if it's going to moisturize your hair are oils and butters. Yes, we already said that oils are not inherent moisturizers, neither are butters, but this doesn't mean they are not useful in helping to slow the moisture loss from your hair. The other half of what makes up healthy hair is its tensile strength. Now the two most common ways to strengthen hair are through the use of proteins and ceramides. So proteins will bind to the damaged gaps in your hair to create a film over your hair that will in doing so help your hair to retain moisture. So safe to say, the two actually go hand in hand. So for all of you who thought that you don't need proteins in your hair care regimen, So in order to get the full strengthening and moisture benefits out of your deep conditioners, you want to look out for deep conditioners that have a range of proteins in them. Now this doesn't have to be an obscene amount of proteins, but even just two or three different sizes of proteins in a deep conditioner will be more than enough. The more different types you can find in one deep conditioner, the better. Because as I've mentioned in my previous videos, the different sizes of proteins will do different things for your hair. So if you want to achieve the full benefits of protein in your high porosity hair, then you want to look out for deep conditioners that will have some amino acids in them or some peptides, as well as some hydrolyzed proteins. Now, technically amino acids and peptides are not full proteins. They are just the building blocks of proteins, but they still do contribute to strengthening your hair in their own way. Now, when it comes to hair, ceramides are an oil that can be found in the cuticle and is responsible for keeping the cuticles together. So if you consider your cuticle layers like shingles on a roof, then ceramides are the glue that keeps these shingles together. And to help explain this, I have what is probably, no, what is definitely the worst visual representation of a human hair. So let's pretend that this straw that you can see is a human hair. Now all of these shingles that I've glued onto this hair strand, you can consider to be your cuticles. Now the glue that I've used to stick these onto this straw can be considered your ceramides. Now in low porosity hair, these cuticles will be laying as flat against the surface of the hair as possible. Now when it comes to high porosity hair, this is a closer visual representation of what your hair cuticles look like. Now the ceramides are essentially what are responsible for not only keeping these tiles attached to your hair, but also keeping these tiles or your cuticles 
from standing up. Ceramides are water responsible for keeping these as flat as possible. So using ceramides in conjunction with proteins in your deep conditioners will not only help to strengthen and fortify your cuticles, but this will also help with moisture retention and improving your hair's elasticity by temporarily reducing your hair's porosity. Now judging by this information, ceramides are most effective for high porosity hair and other types of hair that have experienced damage like chemically treated hair, so relaxed hair, as well as colored hair. So good examples of natural ceramides will include safflower oil, wheat gem oil as well as hemp seed oil and then you have your artificial sources of ceramides which are two oleamido one as well as three octadecanidio. Now whilst the natural sources of ceramides are good the artificial sources actually closer mimic the hair's natural ceramides so where you can try and pick the deep conditioners that contain the artificial ceramides over the ones that have just the natural ceramides. Now conditioning is the third need that we're looking to meet for high porosity hair. So when it comes to curly, coily textured hair, conditioners are primarily there to improve both the appearance as well as the manageability of the hair. And make sure that our hair is not just healthy on the inside, but that it looks healthy on the outside too. So you want to be looking out for things like fatty alcohols, emulsifiers, and emollients. Now these are the ingredients that you can look out for to know if a conditioner is gonna be thick and if it's going to add some sort of lubrication or slip to your hair. So that will be your cetyl, your sterile, as well as your ceteral alcohol, your cetyl esters, your caprylyl glycol, propylene glycol decaprylate, as well as your triglycerides. These ingredients are the difference between those watery conditioners that you guys love to hate and those super thick, super slippery ones that you can't get enough of. And that's on period. You also want to look out for polyquaternium. These are really good anti-static agents, so they will help to reduce frizz in your hair. And studies have also shown that if you have fine hair, these ingredients can actually help to boost the volume of your hair. Now, if you guys don't remember anything else I say in this video, I need you to write down this one ingredient that I'm about to share with you because it's gonna change your life. And this ingredient is behentrimonium methosulfate, or as it's more fondly known on the streets, BTMS. You guys. Every time I see a deep conditioner with BTMS in it, honestly, my spirit man does a little happy dance. Especially if you are somebody that has curly, coily textured hair, this ingredient is going to be your bestest friend in not just your deep conditioners, but also your leave-in conditioners in your creams. The more products that you can find this ingredient in, the better. Not only is BTMS a great thickening ingredient, so you can know that if you are getting a deep conditioner with this ingredient in, not only is it gonna be thick, but it's also going to offer your hair some superior slip. BTMS will deposit itself directly onto your hair to make sure that it's smoothing down your cuticles, which as you guys already know, we need. Now you will also likely find other ingredients that don't technically fall into any one of these groups, but honestly, outside of these three main categories, I'm gonna go as far as saying everything else is just extra. So don't let them fool you. And don't say I didn't warn you. Don't say I didn't warn you. Cause I did. Don't say I didn't warn you. Ay, cause I did. Don't let them guys fool you. Cause they try. Don't let them guys fool you. Hey, you know why? <laughs> A rap queen. Wow. You guys, <laughs> send help. Okay guys, please give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already, then please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out when this album drops, okay? Now I know that I'm covering deep conditioners for high porosity hair in this video, but if you have low porosity hair and you'd be interested in me doing this kind of video for low porosity hair, then please go ahead and put it in the comments below and I'll go ahead and get that video up for you guys. You guys know I had to start this list with the as I am hydration elation. <laughs> At this point, I think we should just move on. This conditioner is probably one of the best low to no protein deep conditioners, but you'll find all of that out when you try it for yourself. So let's get into these ingredients. So we've got aqua, so we've got water. So that was supposed to be the first ingredient that we were looking for as a moisturizer. We've got coconut oil. So we've got an oil and or a butter in here. We've got betaine, which is the only amino acid in here. So we've got cetyl esters as well as cetyl alcohol. We've got glycerin. So there you go with the humectant. We've got quaternium nitive one. We've got cetyl alcohol, again, conditioning ingredient, centrimonium methosulfate, which is similar to behentrimonium methosulfate. We've also got a couple butters in here. We've got shea and 
mango. And then if we go further down the list, we can see that this also has caprylglycol as well as polyquaternium 37. And it also actually has propylene glycol decaprylate. So needless to say, makes sense. Now I will typically only use this on the week after my intensive protein treatment. And the reason I do this is because I want to make sure that I am not overloading my hair with protein. And so after having a protein heavy week, typically in that next week, I'm going to be looking to use a deep conditioner that has very little to no proteins whatsoever in it at all. Now the next few conditions I'm going to be sharing with you guys are the conditioners that I use on the subsequent weeks after I've used my protein free deep conditioner and before I get to my next intensive protein treatment. So the purpose of these next few deep conditioners is to be able to give me a good amount of moisture and also still give me a good amount of strength. So that will be through proteins as well as ceramides. Now the first deep conditioner I want to share with you guys in this category is the Cresce Pello Natural Phytotherapeutic Treatment. People, <laughs> people, yeah. So the ingredients in this are purified water, we've got cetyl alcohol, we've got sterile alcohol, we've got centrimonium chloride, we've got behentrimonium methosulfate. There's also some hydrolyzed silk protein in here. We can see panthenol, which is a film forming humectant. We've also got glycerin, which is a normal humectant. And then we've also got polyquaternium 11 as well as quaternium 80. Yeah. It checks out. Now these next two deep conditioners I particularly like because not only do they have good moisture sources but they also have a good source of protein as well as good sources of ceramides. Now I've actually run out of this next deep conditioner but it is the L'Oreal LV Full Restore 5 Damage Hair Mask. So in the ingredients we have Again, water as the first ingredient. We then have cetyl alcohol, behentrimonium chloride, cetyl esters. We've got hydrolyzed wheat protein, so we've got some proteins in there. We've also got arginine, which is an amino acid. And if we go further down the line, we can see the two artificial ceramides. We've got two oleomida one, as well as three octadecanadiol. We also have some serine in here, which is another amino acid. So this is a really, really good balanced deep conditioner for high porosity hair. It has good moisture sources, protein sources, as well as serine. Now another really good one that I tried is just a bit more on the expensive side is the Redken Extreme Strength Builder Plus. So this is a fortifying mask for highly distressed hair. And if we get into the ingredients of this, we'll see that they are somewhat similar to the L'Oreal LV Full Restore 5. So we've got water as the first ingredient, we've got behentrimonium chloride, we've got sterile alcohol, cetyl alcohol, we also have glycerin. So this actually has the addition of an oil, which I don't believe the L'Oreal one has. So we've got some palm oil in here. We also have some hydrolyzed vegetable protein. We've got arginine in here, which is an amino acid. We've also got hydrolyzed soy protein, another protein in here. And then we have the artificial ceramides again. You've got the two oleomido one, as well as the three oxycanadiol. And then a little further down the list, we can see our winning ingredient, which is the behentrimonium methosulfate. So this is another really, really great balanced deep conditioner for high porosity hair. So typically after my intensive protein treatment that I typically do about every six to eight weeks, I will follow that up with a moisturizing deep conditioner. And then in the remaining five to seven weeks before my next intensive protein treatment, I will typically just alternate between these as well as the L'Oreal Full 5 Restore Mask. Now I know you guys already know that deep conditioning is only half of the equation when it comes to having a successful wash day. So what I'm gonna need you to do right now is to click and watch this video on the screen right now so that you can find out which shampoos you need to use for your hair and when. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.